Laurie. And I'm Sasha. And we're here to share with you the stitching challenge update for the month of June. It's currently the 3rd of June in my world and the 2nd of June in these ladies' world. So um, thanks for joining us. Sit back, grab a cuppa. As usual, the monthlies tend to be quite full. All right, Laurie, let's start with our usual daily 30. Daily 30. So the theme of this month is um, June. Here you go. So the month of June, um, let's start with the first prompt. Stitch on a whip related to the numbers 2 or 39 or related to weddings. 2, 39 or, we or weddings. Yes. Now, I'm just going to say I've done absolutely no preparation for this. <laughs> so um, it will be doing it. In fact, I've got to work out what my pieces are for this month. <laughs> so maybe you should go first, Sasha, while I think about that. Okay. This is a little bit of a stretch, but I think I could explain it away. So I would use Fairy Tale Village here. And if you can see right on the bridge, there's a horse drawn carriage with a man and a woman in it. And I always think of that as kind of a romantic way to be carried away after your wedding. Yes. Yes. Are you ready, Lisa? Or do you want me to go? You go. Okay, um, I'm going to share my whip list because I have a few thoughts. Okay, so we have silver bells here um, and the whip that I would use would be sing and rejoice and there's a church. People get married in a church. So that's the thought there. And there's wedding bells. Oh yeah, wedding bells. Thank you, Sasha. And then the number two, my February gnome is holding two little heart balloons. So the number two, so that's all I've got. All right, I think I've worked it out. I just have to find it now <laughs> because um, one of my whips that has been drawn this month is the Brooks Books Year of Birthday Cakes. And I know it's a birthday cake, but surely a cake could also be a wedding cake. Mm -hmm. so I'll bring it out later when I find it okay prompt number two stitch on a whip that you can relate to the zodiac calendar Ooh. well yeah I don't know well I'm not sure what I one of the animals or items in it and one of the one of the things is the, the Geminis are twins mm -hmm. so do you have anything with twins in it that's that's why my head's going first yes I was thinking and Zach with the two kangaroos yeah yeah, yeah. Just, you know Those facing each other there, there's Anzac yes and down a little bit Lisa do you have the top I don't have the bit with the kangaroos on it <laughs> oh, don't. I'll share my screen. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so the kangaroos are right there. Yes, they could be. Yeah. You know, just a little bit of um, local information here. I had three boxing kangaroos in my back paddock yesterday. Wow. Three of them standing up on their hind legs doing the boxing. Neat. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I'm not, not used to seeing three. That's neat. Yeah, I am really not sure. Do you have anything with what fish? Really... Um, there's someone fishing in Fairytale Village. Okay, do you have any nighttime scenes with stars or moons? Like celestial? No. <laughs> I mean, my Paris one, I guess you could say this is night. I guess you could call that a nighttime scene, but you don't really see the sky. I'd call mm -hmm. that stars. I think there's some stars hiding. Okay, in there's some stars peeking through. Yeah. I think one. that would be my, my best, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. I am. Um, yeah, I have a lot of nighttime schemes and I have, I mean, I have all these ones that I've got, but I haven't started them yet. They're um, from um, Prostate. Oh, those are cute. They are cute. Mm -hmm. I got them because we're doing the year of the, um, the um, Chinese New Year 
zodiac. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not sure yet. You'll have okay. to call for me. Alrighty, prop number three, stitch on either your longest or shortest whip. And she has in parentheses height in stitches. So we're looking at height, not width. We've got a really good width on, don't we? Yes. Well, yeah, my, guess, my height would be yeah. one of my heights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the uh, my Paris one is my tallest. The yeah, that's that's pretty. Um, for me, it is my hate as the leaves turn. I think I've had this prompt you know, since I've been working on it for over a year, but um, there it is right there. And it is bigger than it seems, even though it's not as tall as it is wide, it's still the tallest of my whips. So prompt number four, did you have one, Lisa, that you wanted to bring up? I said my hate. Okay. Um, for a stitch on a whip related to these flowers or traits, be creative. So the flowers and traits that she's speaking of, I have to read some of the prompt. Honeysuckle and rose are the two flowers. Um, the traits of June, which is the birth month, um, desire, affection, generosity. Um, as per astrology, if you have a June birth flower, you're probably a bit of a hopeless romantic. So hopeless romantic. Okay, I have this one. My temperature bookshelf has a row mm. in February. Ah, uh, nice. And I am successfully keeping up with this. So mm. I like to try and stitch on it twice during the month. So like first half does like half the shelf and then the other half. So awesome. <laughs> Sasha? I think I would probably use uh, Fairy Tale Village. It has lots of um, lots of like hedges of flowers. And so I think there's an area that that would look like a honeysuckle mm -hmm. um, kind of climbing up the side of the building. Yeah, nice. nice. Okay, um, next prop number six. Uh, oh, Prompt number five, stitch on a whip related to these stones or traits. Again, stones and traits this time instead of flowers and traits. So that's prompt number five. June, June's birthstone uh, includes the Alexandrite, moonstone, and pearl. Longevity and health are associated with the mineral Alexandrite. Uh, moonstones are thought to bring good fortune and are associated with the passions of love and the passions for one's partner. Purity and faith are the two most inspiring meanings of pearls. Um, stitch on a rip related to the stones or the traits. Oh, well, uh, can I just say the first thing that comes to my mind is longevity. Mm -hmm. You're all the sweet. That's what comes Perfect. to my mind. That would work. Um, mm -hmm. Not what I'm going to do, but longevity. All right, I'm going to stick with longevity and I'm going to do Anzac because. Um, the Indigenous Aborigines of Australia are believed to be the oldest in um, remaining living um, culture. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's still intact. Got it. Yeah. I would go with longevity and look at how this guy has a gray beard. So he must have been around for quite a while. Oh, that would work for your zodiac, Sasha. Yeah, you've got stars on there, zodiac. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that would work for that one too. Um, I'm having a hard time with this one. Um, I would say probably my March gnome because of the good fortune aspect. Um, leprechauns, clover, the luck factor. Yeah. Maybe. It said be creative. Yeah. Well, um, again, as you know, as long as you can explain it properly, you most likely will get accepted as long as you give the explanation. Right. But then you have the passions of love, which the February gnome would fit that as well. So, well, that would be more obvious. More obvious. Yeah. Okay. I like the February. It's easier stitch. <laughs> 
Okay, prompt number, where are we at? Um, six, a stitch on a whip that is like none of your other whips. Be sure to explain why. And the um, graders are really looking for the explanation. All right, well, I got a couple that jumped to mind instantly. One of my ones this month is my fragment of time. And it is a Ooh. tiny, small pillow. And that is mm -hmm. unlike any of my other whips because all my others are big things. Would that be a good reason? Yes. There we go. And I think I would do Baby Got Backstitch because it's monochromatic. It's my only monochromatic whip. Very nice. I need help, y'all, because <laughs> I, can, I can actually relate similarities to all of my whips because, you know, Yes, guys, I, like, uh, I, my, I can get it already, Anzac, or One Nation. Help me, why? Why would I explain that? Okay, so same reason as, um, as Sasha, your Anzacs, your only monochromatic. Uh, I have Cirque de Circles, which okay. is just a variegated, but it is mono. Okay, yeah. okay. all right. Um, is Anzac your only long dog? Mm. I think so. Yep. And One Nation is your only patriotic. Thank you. Okay. I want to do One Nation. So got it. Good. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> um, are we ready to move on? Did we get everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, number seven, stitch on a whip related to fathers or men. I think I'd go with my gnome again. Yeah. Yep. Um, mm, well, this one is a bit of a stretch, but Pretty Little Sydney has a male surfer down the front. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a man. <laughs> that works. I would say um, I want to work on baptism because I need to finish that for my sister. And there's clearly a father here, and there's lots of men. So. Right. Fathers and men there. Not to mention Jesus. Oh, definitely. The most important <laughs> for me. Yeah. Um, okay. Number eight, stitch on your fourth or 10th whip and explain what is your fourth or 10th whip, either like size or alphabetical or some type of order that you're using. Okay. Let me, let me look at my whip go and see what the fourth one is that, was, <laughs> that is in whip go. That would be, that would be this one. <laughs> Blue jeans and daisy because on my Whipgo boards, two numbers are called each, each month and I have three boards. So the first board would be number one and two. The second board would be number three and four, which would land on that one. Got it. And I would use my um, shell wreath because that is the fourth one of my whips in terms of start order. Mm -hmm. You know, if I start with the oldest and went yep. through. Got it. So for me, <laughs> I'm going to show my whip list because I'm just going to take a different strategy on this to help people out. So, okay, I just have my whip list in a spreadsheet and I could go by size here and I'll sort that and, um, smallest to largest because really I'm trying to land on a whip that I really want to stitch on yeah <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm just gonna sort by all of these categories and find out what's gonna hit me the right way and as long as you explain what you've done it's fine they will allow it so. yeah the, on I was thinking as well I could look at my no new starts whip list and um, which is number four in the list or which is number four in the large category or the back category or the small category or and again try it for me it would be finding one that's in this month's callings mm -hmm. so i may still yet do that all righty um number nine stitch on a whip related to sports Ooh. all right this is stretching it i think do you think the samurai warrior would his warrior training exercises be classified as sports? Definitely. Like Taekwondo or karate. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. There we go. 
Ah. <laughs> fishing, fishing, go fishing. Okay. Fishing is a sport, apparently. <laughs> I think it's we got fishing in the pond here. Yep. Yes, it is a sport. I think there's also a little rowboat here. Hey, I'm rowing the sport. Yes. Um, As is horse, horse racing. I could use the horse in here too. Okay. Do you want to put your whips back up for us, Laurie? I will. You can see I'm like, uh, uh, yeah. Well, I was thinking you could do your baptism because it's involving water and water is swimming. Yeah. But, but if that's too much of a, if that's too much. Is there anything on Anzac? Yeah, sailboat racing. Sailboat racing. Jockey. Yep. I could do that. I then could definitely. Horse, for horse racing. That's true. I like the Anzac angle. I haven't fixed fishing. that in a while. Yep. Fishing too. Definitely fishing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Prompt number 10. Stitch on a whip of your choice. <laughs> Um, and reflect on your own progress, whether it be stitching, progress towards resolutions, etc. But they want you to explain. So it's more about the words than stitch on whatever you want. Okay. Well, we don't need to worry about that one right now, but no. I'm sure we can all come up with something for that. Mm -hmm. Now, daily 30, I know this is a monthly, but there's also a couple of things we probably should mention that are happening this week for people to know about. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's pop-up, which is... Um, going to finish in another day's time, is it? Mm, on the Sunday, I believe. Pardon? I believe it's Sunday. Yes, yeah, Sunday. Sunday. The Jubilee, because it's all about the Queen's Jubilee over in England. And so the pop-up, if you want to get work done on that, there's some good prizes, bonus tokens, and also um, the ability to get like, you know, like free pass type of things. Um, and, but you can only stitch two of the prompts. You can't do them all. Well, you can, but they're only going to count two. So there's no point wasting your time doing all of them, which is really hard for the completionists. Um, and also the weekly is out and it's on the theme of Queen Elizabeth. But Laurie and I will tell you more about that next week. <laughs> all right, let's move across to pop culture. Now, pop culture has launched an awful lot of stuff this month because they're not launching in July because of the summer holidays in America. They've actually pre-launched and you can stitch on any of them. And we're not going to go through them all now because it's just way too many. Um, you know, there, there's the acrostic. There's, um, they've got a scavenger hunt happening, which is cool. So you can, um, it's like a photo scavenger hunt where you go around and take a photo and post that. Um, but also we tend to go through the, the more meaty one about June. And really the amount of research they give behind things is phenomenal. It's really worth a read. So it's all about different days in June, and I'm not going to read them all to you, but you get four points for 250 stitches. Mm -hmm. So first one is to do with June 1, and basically um, it's to do with Marilyn Monroe. So you've got to dip, match something to do with Marilyn Monroe. Do you guys have anything? And, and like there's a whole bunch of things you can list to do with things about Marilyn Monroe, but... Anything jump to mind? If not, I'll move on. No, that's right. June 5th is to do with the first sustained flight as a hot air balloon. Um, and it's an, a repeated the experiment for King Louis, there's something for rather using a sheep rooster and duck as the passengers. So anything to do with that? No hot air balloons, no ducks, roosters. Nope. Oh, there are ducks on Fairytale Village. There you go. There, there are ducks swimming in the pond. Oh, yeah. Under the go. Um, I don't have anything jumping out at me. Oh, no, uh, I've got, I've probably got swans. I don't know if they're swans or ducks swimming in the pond of Silk um, Stone Manor, um, Silkwood Manor. Then June 6 was to do with the feminist Susan B. Anthony being fined for voting in an election. So it's about the um, women's right to rights to vote. So anything with a woman in it, really. Mm -hmm. um, also on June 6th is D-Day. 
the, um, the largest amphibious landing in history to do with the war. Yes. Got anything for that? It landed in France. <laughs> like it. Well, I'm, I'm stretching it, but you know, he's a warrior. Yeah. Yes. Wrong and, country, but. <laughs> and one nation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this one would do for one nation. It's to do with the June 10th, Massachusetts silversmith John Hull opened the first mint in America. So you could oh. definitely do one nation because Massachusetts is in there. Mm -hmm. Anything different? Definitely. Um, June 10th, Af Amer African American actress Hattie McDaniel was born in Kansas. Um, so she was from Gone with the Wind. Well, these look like wheat to me. These, uh, yeah. When I think about Kansas, I think about wheat fields. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. You got anything? As the leaves turn, it's a pumpkin farm, but Gone with the Wind was on a plantation or a farm. So there you go. Um, Judy Garland was born on June the 10th in Grand Rapids, Minnesota. And she's from The Wizard of Oz and a bunch of other um, movies, including Easter Parade. Somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. Well done. That's a good, good relation to that. Yes. Um, ooh, would I be stretching it? This, 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 is, this is really stretching it. There's no place like home. Oh, yeah. I like it. <laughs> when you said somewhere over the rainbow, it's like the other quote is there's no place like home. Right? So yeah. maybe. And I'd still do One Nation because it has Kansas in it. In, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, June 11th, undersea explorer Jacques Cousteau was born. So you got anything under C, I would be going there's a C. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or there's plenty of under the seas there, Laurie. Yes. There you go. And I would use this one, which is a beach. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. That fits well. June 12th, and Frank was born. And so she's the perhaps the best known victim of the Nazi Holocaust. Mm-hmm. You know what I would pick for that one? Yeah. I would be going just with a little girl. Oh, yes. Um, June 18th, Dr. Sally Ride, a 30 year old physicist and pilot, became the first American woman in space. Nope. Mm -hmm. Again, anything with a woman in it would do. Um, American musician Mildred J. Hill on June 27th was born in Louisville, Kentucky, and she composed the melody for Happy Birthday to You. Do you know what you could use? Do you have any pieces that you started as a birthday sale for yourself? That's what I was thinking about, but mm -hmm. I finished my birthday start already. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but I have Sing and Rejoice. Yes, yeah, Sing and Rejoice, yeah. the song, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, then we don't need to talk about this, but already it then mentions the, the, the birthstones and the, and the birth flowers. Then there's a couple of other random days, World Environment Day, so anything with outdoors thing. Um, <laughs> I would do, I would probably do my garden, my herbivores oh, yeah. for that. Yes, yeah. that, that would work well. June 19th is Father's Day, I'm guessing in America. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So again, your father prompt that you could double dip from the other one. And June mm -hmm. 1st is the summer solstice. So I would, I again, would be able to easily, you could either use Anzac because it's got a sun on it, or I could use my pretty little Sydney with a sun. So, you know, mm -hmm. good double yeah. dip happening there. You've got a sun. My gnome has a sun on his hat. Yep. Yep. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of celebrity birthdays worth one point, but we're not going to go through all of them. So that mm -hmm. gives you some idea about what's happening in pop culture. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so the acrostic, just so that you know, in case you want to know what the word is, vacation, V-A-C-A-T-I-O-N. All right, what about semi-sane, Sasha? What's happening in semi-sane? 
All right. Well, Semi Sane has a whole bunch of events in June. Um, they're doing uh, Master Stitch, like the game Mastermind, where you have to uh, guess a sequence of of pegs, and so you have to stitch in in each color to to guess. Um, then we've got, sorry, something popped up on my screen. Uh, this or that. And so for that one, it's non-counting and you stitch on something related to June or something related to beach or animals. Well, that's easy. We've got the beaches yeah. covered, don't we? Yeah, I think we've talked about those themes. Then there's the summer start to finish um, where you, know, you pick a, you, you need to start and then show progress on and then show finish with the code word on a, on a whip. So that's not really good for us. No new starts, but we do have yeah. some starts available depending. Well, on if you're tissue boxing something, you yeah. know, yeah. it can work with that. Yeah. Um, then there's the June focus challenge, you know, focus on one, one yeah. piece, uh, the calendar sal for June. So any, anything related to a calendar or to 12 parts, basically. I've been using the, the year of gnomes for that one. Mm -hmm. And then they have a World Cup event and they haven't yet published how it's gonna work, mm -hmm. but it sounds like they're gonna be teams and the teams are gonna be paired off against each other and there's gonna be a little <laughs> stitch off of some sort. That's yeah. Something. Well, we'll have to keep an ear out for that. We'll let you know when we learn more. Yes. Thanks, Sasha. Yep. Um, all right, Laurie, what are we doing in No New Starts, as if I don't already know? <laughs> in No New Starts, um, we have June Know Your Admin Mod, uh, who is Carla for the month of June. So I'm just going to go through the prompts really quick. Carla lives in Pennsylvania. So stitch on a piece that you can tie to Pennsylvania. Um, it could be like any fact about Pennsylvania, or it could be some um, geographic point of, of, you know, of interest in the state. Um, I'm going to stitch on One Nation, which has Pennsylvania listed in the way. Right, can I ask you a question for a, a person who lives on the other side of the globe? Okay. What would be the first thing that comes to your mind about Pennsylvania? If you think Pennsylvania, what do you think? Chocolate or the Liberty Bell. Okay. Or in Hershey's in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. The chocolate or the Liberty yeah. Bell. Okay, thank you. Or the the Amish. Um, oh, okay. Oh, Quakers. Mm. Something Quaker. Quaker. Yeah, Quakers. Yeah, farms, farm. Farm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So I think I would probably use Baby Got Backstitch, um, and go kind of the Amish oh. route. I don't have anything that fits any of those things in this current selection of whips that I'm working on, but that's like okay. the Pennsylvania is the keystone state. So if you have an arch or something that has a keystone in it, I guess you could use that. No, um, I'll, I'll do some research though, because my, my day blue jeans and daisies has a lot of different flowers in it. So there's possibly something there mm -hmm. I can tie into it. All right, I thought for the rest of the viewers that are or, like and have no idea. <laughs> you know, I think there's lots of kind of farm area in Western Pennsylvania. So yes. you could probably take that angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. What's next? Okay. Um, number two, uh, the month of June celebrates Carla's birthday. Stitch on a project you can tie to June. I was thinking uh, flowers in full bloom. The sun. We've already talked random. about I have June in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would I would do the June gnome. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that fits. Yep. I would do one of my mini flower pieces. <laughs> um, number three, this month is a milestone birthday for Carla. So they didn't say which one, but <laughs> you could put 50 stitches in something to celebrate. Um, okay, how, how old she is. Yes. Um, it says a celebration project, but I think you can spend whatever project well, is. Yeah, exactly. Again, if you've got a birthday one, look, for me, I actually have that because Carla and I, believe it or not, are actually almost twins. 
um, when you work out, like when you're taking the difference, the time differences, like, you know how we're talking to each other right this second and mm -hmm. I'm talking to you from the future and you're talking to me from the past, mm -hmm. to me, if you take this as being the actual time now, Carla and I are only 10 hours apart in our actual oh. birth time. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're actually almost twins, as in if we were dropped to the earth at the exact same moment on different sides of the planet, we're only 10 hours apart. She landed 10 hours before me. So she's old. Happy birthday, Carla. Um, <laughs> this piece I started at my birthday retreat and I will be working on it at my birthday retreat. So this would be my celebration piece for that reason. Um. I would stitch on baptism. It's um, an acknowledgement and a celebration of faith. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've already shared it, so I won't. Yeah. yeah. And I think I would stitch on uh, the Eiffel Tower of Paris because it just always seems like a celebration. Well, it looks like there's firecrackers there. going off in the back. And bathroom. all the colors. Yeah. It just seems mm -hmm. very festive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Number four, her favorite drink is coffee and favorite snack is popcorn. Stitch on a whip, you can tie to both one or both of those. Coffee and popcorn. I don't think I have anything I can tie into coffee or popcorn. Uh, all I could come up with is that coffee is grown on plants and there are plants in Herbularius. <laughs> that's about as close as i could get oh yeah. as is corn <laughs> yes uh, what about could you could you get away with it this might be pushing it and stitching in dark brown or white it says tie too so tie it oh uh, yeah <laughs> you'd uh, have to ask the people in charge if no new starts yeah yeah well <laughs> No, I'm actually I have to ask the person in charge of this event, and that's not me. <laughs> Martha, yeah, I'd, I'd really write yeah. a story. <laughs> I think if you write a story with it, and you know, this is the dark brown that is like the you know coffee, or I don't know. I'm just trying to think for the people who are like me to have nothing that would fit. So, mm -hmm. what's next, Laurie? Okay, number five, reds are Carla's favorites to stitch with. So stitch with something, uh, stitch with red threads. It says stitch with red threads. So not just something that has red in it, but the stitches that you claim need to be in reds. And that was be easy for me because this one is mostly red. Mm -hmm. And that ties in a lot with the um, current weekly prompts or monthly there's lots of color ones in the daily 30 at the moment so yes you... red white and blue mm -hmm. yeah and this gnome reads pretty red so i think i could find plenty of red on there yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. number six looking through carla's no new starts album you might be able to guess that her favorite designer is heaven and earth designs stitch on a design from Hade. all right well that's easy yeah my stitch in time Yes. Paris for me. <laughs> and as the leaves turn for me, I've already shown that. So, lovely. okay. And number seven, Carla is responsible for our road trip event this year. Stitch on a piece that you can tie to a road trip. Okay. This is a bit out of left field, mm -hmm. but I would take a road trip around Australia. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I will go with um, as the leaves turn and I'll show it this time because I want to show you. So these people are taking a trolley ride, but back in the day, I imagine that's how you took a road trip on a coach or in a trolley. Yep. And this is my travel piece. This is what I take along with uh -huh. me when I'm when going on a road trip. Yes. I like that aspect. Yeah. That's good. Well done. That's why yeah. we do these videos because you get different opinions. Yes. Number eight, there is no unicorn pattern Carla wants. <laughs> she just has FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> uh, so she wants all the patterns. Stitch on a whip that you've started due to FOMO or fear of missing out. All right, 
I'm going to go with Anzac. And I'm going to go with the gnome Arms. because lots of my stitching buddies were stitching this and I did not want to miss out on the fun. Yeah. Yeah. I could do either of those, mm. hence the FOMO, because I'm also doing <laughs> Anzac and I'm also doing the gnomes. Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Last one. Number nine. Stitch on a whip that is identical to one that Carla has in her album. The link should take you to her hate album. So she has a lot of hates in there. So just peruse and yeah. see if something um, matches your lip whip. I know, list. I, I know I've got matches. I just can't think of any off the top of my head. One yep. of, and I've just got the gnomes, right? It has to be her hates or just no, any, no, in her anything in her album. And Zach's in there. Yeah, okay, cool. There you go. Easy. There you go. Uh, Laurie. All right. No. The next one that we talk about just quickly is mythological stitches, continuing our year of gemstones. And this will be relating because we've already heard about June gemstones and things. You can do this month though, three levels, 700 stitches, 2000 stitches, or 4000 stitches in total. Um, so you can do whatever you want, basically. And you've got Alexandrite. So let me see. So yeah, you've got to fit into these pearl. All right, here we go. Um, stitch on your on a new start or your most recent start. So we're not doing a new start. What's your most recent start? Mine is baby got back stitch. Mm -hmm. Mine is baptism. Mine's probably Nutcracker Village because it only just came out comparatively just in time for me to get 200 stitches done before the deadline for no new starts. Because um, Cleopatra's earring was the biggest in the world, stitch on your largest project. We've already talked about that. Um, something about the colours of Alexandra with the duality of human blood. Stitch on a living being that has blood or a project showing blood. So that's pretty easy. Anything with a person um, or any living being that has blood. Mm -hmm. um, pearls were a status symbol in ancient Rome. Stitch on a project you would only give to someone very special. Which one's your most one you'd give to someone special out of what you're stitching? Um, I'm doing baptism for my sister. And for me to do a full coverage for someone, that person is extra special. <laughs> she is. I, I don't feel like I'm going to give any of my current ones to anyone. <laughs> yeah, none of, my, none of my current whips are gifts at the moment. That's fine. And then the last one is stitch on a pro project that shows a duality of some time it, or uses beads or French knots. So in other words, two types of stitches, two types of floss, brands, that sort oh. of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so for me, that would be herbularious. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, I got I got an interesting twist on that. Yeah. Under my Anzac in a silks for you variegated floss. That's very mm. duality. It's got like two different colors merged together. Yeah. Yes, I would use my Chatelaine as well, Alhambra Garden, yeah. All right, so that is the main ones we talk about, but let's see what's happening around the traps with all the other, other games, events. My goodness, there's so many. Um, so, in, so you think you can stitch at the moment, we are just still working on our food truck and we are working our way through restocking to head towards the next event. Um, Sasha, what's happening in Harry Potter? Harry Potter has the Triwizard Tournament is happening, and that's a team event where uh, we're going through the different steps of the tournament and collecting stitches as a team. And then there's also the individual challenge for June, and that's uh, Hermione Granger. And so uh, there's, you know, certain amounts of stitches ranging from 500 to 2,500 for various, you know, prompts related to Hermione. And the good thing about that one is you can just um, stack your stitches. So let's say the first one's 500 stitches and you've done 550 stitches. 
you put your 550 down and then you can roll over the next which is great so it's nice and easy right. the, the 50 rolls over yeah, not, not the whole 500, 500. No, no. yeah but you can use the excess and you can roll it over to start the next yeah. one i like that then nothing's wasted all the games have different rules so you've really got to read um there's something interesting about the tri wizard tournament sasha that you're not telling us Oh, yes, I was the lucky one selected to be the Ravenclaw champion. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. I get to actually play. I'm not sure what that means yet, but I'm <laughs> excited to have been chosen by the Wheel of Fortune. There you go. Hopefully, <laughs> I guess by the it. goblet, really. Yes, right? the goblet chose you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the fire. Um, the Utopia game has been on a little hiatus for a couple of weeks because the admin got sick but she has said she's relaunching it as of Sunday night. So anyone who's playing the um, Utopia game, get ready to recommence on Sunday night. Um, mm -hmm. I know that our group were traveling, so we'll just continue our traveling and have to pay attention to rolling the dice every thousand stitches. Yes. Um, Laurie, what's happening Survival of Stitchiest? Survival right now, they're having a Jubilee event as well because the admins are, um, uh, British, I believe. Um, anyway, so it's a stacking event and it's lasting for four days. Um, basically, you stitch so many stitches and you just level up as you go. Again, no wasted stitches there either. Um, and normally they put out a monthly event, but I believe because of the Jubilee and them taking time off to celebrate that they'll start the monthly prompt after this stacking event is over. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Hell Stitchin? Uh, Hell Stitchin, uh, we're between major events right now. We just, um, we just finished a karaoke event and we're restocking our fridge and our pantry and waiting for the next one to come up. There you go. Now, the other thing is that there is um, signups available on So You Think You Can Stitch for the next event, which is going to be Survivor. So if you're in So You Think You Can Stitch and you want to get on a team for Survivor, you, there's a sign-up post you need to write on and you need to say what time zone you're in. So um, Heather's obviously going to organise things either in teams of like timed people or maybe she's going to spread herself out so that you've got, you know, an Australian in each team sort of thing. So I have no idea what she's doing, but she wants to know your time zone so she can make the teams in preparation for that next game, which probably doesn't start till July but you've got to get the sign up happening. Um, the other thing that's ha happening now in preparation for July is a new group, which is called the Stitching Adventure Game. Um, it's being run by Rita Marie, and it is, I think, still accepting members. If you want to have a game that's um, based along sort of old fashioned computer game style, um, I don't really know the type of games that it's based on, but it's, it's, a, it's a role play game where you're in teams and you're going to have to stitch consistently. It's not a game for someone who doesn't want to stitch consistently. Um, look up Stitching Adventure Game and get yourself, there's a post there for people who are looking for a team and, and join up. All right, I think we've covered pretty much everything, guys. As usual, we probably missed something. If that's you, <laughs> sorry, but we try. Um, and we will look forward to, hopefully Laurie and I will catch you next week for a weekly slash fortnightly roundup. Thanks for joining us, Sasha. Yes, All right. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.